Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna get myself some tea. I just came from Pat, and I both came from just another another group. I'm, I know she's on her way too, but I'm gonna get myself a cup of tea. Okay, sounds good. Well, welcome everybody to Thursday nights, the Kingdom Way, and we're working on goal setting because without a vision, my people perish. So, creating a goal and then making a plan towards that goal whatever that is. So that's where we're going. And we have coming into the room now, Miss Melanie. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Melanie. How Hi, everybody. You? Good. How are you? Good. How's your week gone? going? It's been a really busy week for sure. It is it really has been. So I am going to have to, after I just, I want to listen tonight well, I want to listen every night, but I'm going to shut my camera off and the sound so sure. you won't hear me. But okay. yeah, I just got home from uh, from an appointment uh, from a, a massage therapist, naturopath. So yeah. I've got some things I have to do with that before I go to bed. Okay. Um, no we'd, problem. We'd love, to, love to hear about it, though. Yeah, it's it's food related, as all of us know. It's very food related. Yeah. And um, and one of the things that she has encouraged me to do is to eliminate all fruit completely, except mm -hmm. for blueberries, if I really want them. And um, I, I, you know, I have a pretty clean diet, but it can be cleaner. And um, the other thing that she has suggested is no grain, not even oatmeal, which I haven't been eating for about three weeks as a result of the call that I've, you know, what I've learned from you guys on this call. Yeah. And uh, so I did eliminate that three weeks ago. I don't feel any difference. Uh, she did say if I take it back and eat it, I should eat it alone, not eat it with anything else. And, um, not to eat anything imported, just to eat what's local in my area, just to exactly. eat local food. Yeah. So that kind of eliminates like going to Costco and getting the spinach and the salad packs and all, all of that stuff. It also increases the cost of the food a lot because eating, eating local, eating greens locally grown here in the winter time is going to be expensive. So, well, ideally well, we're going to eat. Ideally, people would eat yeah. in the season yes. and locally. Yes, right. So there wouldn't be any fruit in our area. And people that are eating stuff from some other country, yeah, uh, we're not made. Well, at least not up here in Canada. We're not made for tropical fruits. No, that's, no, that's what she really like pointed out. And she yeah. also encouraged me to look up a um, uh, a chart, food food pairing, I think, or food food comb combining to not okay. eat things, to, you know, certain things together that it can cause a real episode in the gut. And we all know that a lot of the problems that we feel when we're not doing well is gut based. And Absolutely. I have a lot of inflammation, so much inflammation in, in my body. That's what's killing my feet and yep. not yep. my joints. My joints are not under attack, but my muscles and tendons and ligaments yep. are. And uh, so, yeah, I, I've known I've known Linda for about 20 years and she's a fairly acclaimed person in the naturopathic world. And um, and you know when you go to where you're not going to get information you really want to hear. It's information you need, but it's not. It, she's hardcore. She, she's pretty hardcore. Yeah. She well, also you know that those carbohydrates, especially mm -hmm. those um, things like the grains that you're talking about, can cause inflammation. The sugar in the fruit yeah. can also cause inflammation. It causes your insulin to rise that you yeah. don't want to rise. Um, yeah. The blueberries that she suggested. Yeah, that's that's okay a little bit here or a little bit there, um, yeah. mostly in season. And uh, yeah, so keeping it simple. And the other yeah. thing with the greens, 
is that they talk so much, oh, kale is good for you. Well, kale actually is not good for you. Kale's my kale stomach. Is very yeah. high in oxalates, lectins, yeah. like all these toxins actually. So, but having just generally greens, like a little let lettuce or something like that, yeah. um, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. And you can grow it yourself. Yeah. Window, yeah, I can do some hydroponics too to get some. Uh, Easy. Yeah, I can. I've got all the seeds. I've done it before, so I can do it again. I've got a lot of different kinds of seeds, and it's very easy to do to grow hydroponics. I used to take the um, romaine lettuce, and when you have just the bottom part, yes, you can just put it in a little bit of water and put it in your windowsill, and it will regrow. It will. Yeah, it will. Yes, so that's good. And she did also, uh, she has to send this to me. Um, she said there's a medical doctor in Halifax that's also a naturopathic doctor. And she said she went on to study naturopathic medicine because she was very limited in the medical world for what she wanted to do. So right. Because she's an MD, she can order blood work so she can get the diagnostics done. And then she can treat you, uh, you know, naturopathically. So that's that. And um, that's what she kind of left me with. But I did get a very good treatment tonight of a lot, a lot of releasing. And uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah. Excellent. And Excellent. she told me to use a ball just to roll my feet every night, every day uh, with this ball in the for, kind of the, the arch. Length. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. will release a lot of the waste that's, you know, fallen. That's she said, that's where the waste will fall into your hands and your feet. Um, mm -hmm. So she told me that and then to either do a foot bath or a full bath every day with borax uh epsom salt and soda okay and, and to be very very to read everything that you know comes up don't just sit and read but metabolically it's the metabolic system in my gut that's the ph that's not not good have um, you ever read the book <laughs> excuse me metabolical no i haven't that's and that's book. what it's called, metabolical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what she said my problem is, is mm -hmm. the metabolic mess that my system is right. in creating the inflammation. And you yes. have definitely, you you know, on this call, we've, we've, we've talked about that. It is, yeah. it is, it's stuff I don't want to hear because I don't like change to begin with. And I don't like. <laughs> With my food, I don't want to be giving up that. But, I mean, I can't just go creeping around here. And that's basically what I do. And it's not very nice. So I, mean, I guess it comes down to, like, what do you want, right? Because yeah, if what you, do you want, want your health, then which you one you want? you got to make some changes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who do you serve? <laughs> it's like that yes. question. Who do you serve? Who do you serve? Yeah. Do you so, serve health? Or do you serve the French fry? That's not the French right. fry, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> serve the flesh or serve serve the Lord. Serve so God or serve the flesh. Yeah. Right. So Sally, you asked, and that's what it was. Yeah. Um, well, that <laughs> not, is very interesting. It's very interesting. She's very interesting. Um, I don't like what she says. I That's why I haven't gone to her for a long time. But, I mean, mm -hmm. I've kind of exhausted all of the the pansy patch visits that I can make. And if I want to be better, I do have to do better. And I know Linda would not lead me astray. No, she's right on. From she's what you're right on. Me. She is. And she also said, and this is a really quite a drastic thing mm -hmm. that uh, there is a clinic, uh, not that, you know, maybe 25, 30, 40 minutes from me in Bedford, a naturopathic clinic where they do, um, many different treatments one she said i got rid of lyme disease there by getting iv oxidized uh, something oxidation therapy oxid something and uh and she said you know that this doctor might refer you there might refer you to that clinic for some kind of natural medical intervention 
Maybe to get getting rid, rid of, of oxidative stress. Oxidated, yeah, that's that's the word. Oxidated therapy, Sally. Oxidative stress. There are things that get rid of that. Yeah, oxidate. That's what it is. It's oxidated something, and there's an yeah. IV. They do some kind of an IV treatment there that cleanses the blood. Yeah. And uh, it gets rid of the, uh, and get, you know, to help get rid of the inflammation. That sounds expensive to me. But, uh, yeah. yeah. It's good you found a doctor, though, because that's very rare um, mm -hmm. in Canada that you can find somebody that can actually do blood work and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. That's a naturopath, right? Mm -hmm. Because, or a homeopath, or there's, yeah, or any of those. It's, yeah. Um, or osteopaths, none of those. They don't do that. No, the they doctors don't, don't want to do it because it's outside of their. They just don't do that. Yeah, that's um, why she went on to be a naturopathic doctor mm -hmm. so she could actually do more. And but now I, Linda ha couldn't find her name and she couldn't remember it, so she has to get it to me. And it could be a wait before I get in there. But Linda did point out you don't have to wait to start making the changes in your food. And, uh, you know, you, there's things you can do right away. And she said, if you're doing them, I think she'll be easier for you to work with, you know, when you do get with her. So I wonder if they'll be testing your um, your fasting insulin, because normally we don't do that in Canada. I don't know. I thought about that. Really? She, well, I thought she, that was standard. No, not hmm. in Canada. Not in Canada. <laughs> No, you don't know what it's like living here, Miss Sally. The other thing that she did say, and then I'll stop talking, um, is she said, I, I really believe that the doctor, when you get to her and she does her diagnostics, will treat you for parasites. And, and definitely the parasites like warm, sugary food. And, and that, that does create cravings. That, that's a lot of the cravings. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Ivermectin yeah. on the way. I do have <laughs> Ivermectin and she's going to send me the protocol to take, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to take it because mine's in liquid form. Hers is in yeah. pill form, but you can combine them unless you have, I guess the protocols are probably not that hard to get, but they've been removed from the American medical. Uh, that's where she downloaded her information from when COVID was first breaking. All yep. of these studies were on one of your big sites in the United States, uh, <laughs> your medical sites, you guys. And um, and so she went on right away and uh, I downloaded it because when she went back for it, it wasn't there. Yeah. 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 So I do have ivermectin. Yeah. My husband Wait, just finished a round of ivermectin. Mm -hmm. uh, did he use liquid or pill? Pill. Pill. Yeah. And what, what's it for? Parasites. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's also uh, very, very effective in treating many other medical things if you know how to do it, like cancer for one. And well, another... he took it for a lung infection. Yeah, and, oh. and it, yeah, that's it. That's why I have it is for my lungs. For when I get, mm -hmm. you know, if I get an infection, it's for lungs. That's why I own it. But I do know it's a parasitic me uh, medicine. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take that too to do a good cleanse, do a do good parasite cleanse. Yeah. That's my joy <laughs> for today. <laughs> but I think it's really empowering because there's so many things that we can do. Yes. And um and we're you know, and you've got the help was sent to you. Yes. Or you you went to them, but basically um, yes. you let them known about Linda, right? Yes. And now the doctor's on its way. So all yeah. these pieces kind of all fit together. All fitting together. Yeah. All fitting together. I the Lord is good. Yeah, the yeah. Lord is really yeah, very, very generous. Um, yeah, when we're ready, He provides the way for sure. Yeah, that's right. When we're ready, the teacher appears. That's right. Yeah, right. the student's ready. 
Yeah, and it was, I knew when I went to her that it was going to be a rough go, and it was. <laughs> I you don't go think back. she was going to say, oh, just sit down and eat chocolate bars. You'll be all no. better. <laughs> all no. no, no. She's pretty darn hardcore. She was my reflexology teacher 20 years ago. That's how I met her. And she... Uh, and she she's she's like it, it, she's a Canadian instructor for a lot of things. She's pretty good. Excellent. That yeah. is excellent, Melanie. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I just want to say, Sally, we yeah. sold out the tickets for the Christmas home tour and oh, raised eighteen hundred dollars clear profit for the wow. cat. Yes. Wow. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's that's fabulous. Thank thank you for the on behalf of the kitties. Yep. They're gonna have some crunchies for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I just got my uh the check back, by the way, from uh. Marlon, that I didn't have enough Canadian postage on it, so well, don't have, send it. <laughs> don't send it now. We are in a mail strike. Nothing's moving. Oh, uh, you're kidding! No, no. And I'm waiting for a package from Kelly Hogan. Well, how am I going to get it now? There's a mail strike. Yeah. yeah. Well, Gosh. people need need PayPal. Well, yeah, PayPal, PayPal or Venmo. You could send it, actually. Uh, I know Marlon would not have PayPal, but if you ever wanted to, you could send it to me, PayPal, and I could okay. give it to her. Okay. I, could, I, I, I have do, PayPal. That's yeah. what I'll do. It's, it's for Louie. It's, it's for like a month. It was a month ago I sent it, and I'm just getting oh, it back. Okay. Yeah. But anyway. Well, if you want to do that, I can get it and give I will. it to, to uh, Marlon. Yeah. I will for sure. Hmm. What about you, Sally? How have you been doing? Well, um, I um, I kind of went the other direction, but um, I think it's all in the same same cause of finding what really works for us individually. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, I'm just very despondent last couple of days over some um, things that I thought were going to work with my my diet just didn't. I mean, they did um, the um, a pill that that replicates the doesn't replicate is really much better than the the shots like Wagovi and all. This is just a pill that just has um, vitamins and herbs to um, activate your own um, okay. GPL one, your own hormone instead of giving you a um, a, a fake one. And it, your own it GLP really, one, yeah, yeah. So um, it was I would really thrilled with it because I don't didn't have the the cravings the food chatter any of that it was it was exactly in a matter of hours what happens when you don't have sugar and flour so um I was thrilled but it just it, it really makes me constipated I'm not a water drinker this is why you need to drink water for this I'm trying to force feed it but um you know it's going to take a while so anyways I was just I was very discouraged and went on what I called a binge the first time in a long time. It, 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 you know, wasn't a full plum binge and I haven't been for a while, but, um, you know, I had a big salad. This was, you know, three hours after an early dinner. It was around mm -hmm. seven thirty or so a big salad and then some ice cream and a small candy bar. I mean, it doesn't sound like a full binge, but it was definitely, um, you know, that slippery slope. So I thought, I, I know everyone that I have worked with, because I have a, I definitely have a binge eating disorder and has said that before you do anything, you have to get rid of the, the binge, binging, that that has to be cleaned up. So um, um, I had a couple times been, I don't know if you've heard of Catherine Hanson, the brain over binge, but the, um, she's kind of the, um, the, the head of that, that school and her, her coaching group is called binge code. And I've, I've met with them twice before and, um, over the years for about a year 
eat and was was really good felt great felt clean felt free um so i just i just i signed up and i'm going back to that and they they believe you don't give up any major group um okay so it's again it's kind of the other direction it's all whole foods or you know whole but um and it's they they have five meals a day three meals and two snacks so that you don't go too long without they they don't want you to ever get hungry right um um so anyways i'm uh, i signed up for a 12-week course in that uh with uh, some people i know it's it's on a, a zoom group plus we get workbooks every week and um i feel like i was kind of sent there it was the as soon as i got the stuff it was like oh i can relax well that's good that's yeah good yeah well, different things work for different people. We do know that. I know that, um, that the way that it that it doesn't work as well for me, right? So for right for me, I would I wouldn't even worry about the binge so much. It would be what would the binge be on? Yeah, because I'll tell you, I've never binged on salad alone. Maybe <laughs> salad with dressings. Maybe salad well, with this you know, or, or that on top, but I've never binged on just lettuce. Well, no, but, it, but it was a, it was a nice salad, not a huge one. It was a, a side salad, you know, but then that's, I added. That's never, now the ice cream, that's a different yeah. story. The ice cream or yeah. chocolate bars, those are, are binge items. So yeah. when I look at it for myself, I would say, oh, it's for me, it would be the sugars because that's the things I would binge on. And some yeah. people would binge on, um, carbohydrates like chips that are salty and fatty and stuff like that. Not right. very many people binge on broccoli. No, although or I did have that for dinner steak. and it tasted, and I had that for, I did that, that too. It both tasted good. So I actually ate a full meal of, of steak and broccoli. Good. Yeah. yeah. And they don't Before usually binge on, on steak. I mean, yeah, you might eat a pound, a pound and a half, maybe two pounds of steak. But they're, wow, they're well, I call that a binge for a long time. <laughs> I wouldn't call that a binge. I would call that like it, it's you wouldn't be hungry for a very long time, right? A That's pound called is dinner normal. for me. <laughs> That's a dinner. Pound is my normal. Wow, wow. Pound and a half. Pound and a half. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm four hours. But there's no broccoli. <laughs> there's no nothing oh. else. No, yeah, there's no broccoli. <laughs> We'll have but, my plate um, of broccoli. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think you can relate to it still, Sally, that you probably don't binge on broccoli or no, no. lettuce. No, no, right. And, and I was I was really feeling down and discouraged and disappointed. And it was like, I want something to feed that feeling. Yeah. I, and, you know, sometimes so what it is, not just the feeling, it's our microbiome that's screaming and wants it because it's been used to it. So it's screaming and it's not even us that's hungry, but it's our microbiome that's hungry. Yeah. Well, I haven't had those two things in a long time, but yeah, last night I wanted them or maybe for whatever it was. Um, and I just, well, you've it got was, a plan, Sally. I do. And I, again, I felt relieved yep. when I signed up for it. So I think that that's a good sign for me. That's a good sign for you. Yeah, we will look. Yeah. We look forward to hearing how it's going to go for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We are all different in this group, I must say. We are all very different <laughs> in this group, aren't we? And that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Do whatever works for you. Yeah, that's really good. I, um, you know, I I got so kind of wedded to bright line eating that, um, and I think that it's fine for who, who it works for. And they kept saying, "Well, if it worked for you." why go off but everything i i did very well on weight watchers for a long time i did very well on jenny craig um you know you you do well and then you don't well it was the same with bright line eating so it it's just it's just another diet yeah you yeah. want to get um a food plan that works for you sally and then right. stay with it you know the saying that if it works don't change it if it's not right. working do something different that's exactly what I thought. 
Yep. Excellent. Yeah. And Pat, how are you doing this week? Words of wisdom. If it works for you, keep on doing it. Because right, I, right. I used to tease my members because I am a binge eater also, emotionally, emotionally. And any anything would make me happy. But like you say, Kathy, it was the chips. It was the p uh, pizza. It was uh, cheese and crackers, uh, a block of cheese and, and thing of crackers. <laughs> okay. And I said, uh, I can teach you to binge Weight Watcher style. And I used to have 10 ounces of green beans. <laughs> exactly. A little bit of tomato sauce over it and a dusting of Parmesan cheese. And that was my binge. And I lost weight that way <laughs> by yeah. binging. Now I don't have to do that, though. Um, I don't have to do that anymore because um, I've learned to that it was an emotional. Food is uh, having uh, is ruling me. And after a mm -hmm. while, that bothered me. Some I don't know why. It bothered me that that food was ruling me, okay? And so uh, eliminating big portions and recognizing what to do. And like you say, it's different for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It is. And that food ruling you, right? It's like a, a dictator. It's an addiction. Yeah. Right? And that's the root word of addiction is actually dictator. So mm -hmm. it's the addiction that's dictating to us. The food mm -hmm. is dictating to us what we're going to do. In exactly. An addiction. That's and so true. So that was a good strategy that you used and it worked for a period of time. Go ahead and binge, but this is what you're going to binge on. Either the large salad that's just lettuce. Yep. Yep. It's going to be a lot of green beans <laughs> with only a right. little bit of tomato sauce. Or yep. for those that are more meat-based or carnivore, it's going to be the pound or two pounds if you want. Right, Because right. you right, won't right. do it very often. Right. You won't want right. to. Mm -mm, so, mm -mm. Um, right, yeah, but yeah, real food, and yeah, as we were saying, right. with Melanie, real food, locally grown, because you want the microbes that are in the area that matters to your body. Mm. So you don't want the stuff imported from who knows where, but locally oh, yes. grown and in season. Right, yeah. right, absolutely. I did have my tooth pulled today and i'm happy oh, i did. did yes i had a mm -hmm. cap tooth for years and years and years and years and uh i guess going through the treatments and all i hear that uh, that uh, kind of takes a toll on your teeth also and so uh the d dentist noticed it was uh the tooth underneath there you know that ca the cap was uh decayed decayed wow so I'm oh, okay. happy i had it i'm happy i had it pulled today because he actually found um what do they call that? Infection. He also wow. found infection underneath there, which I didn't feel. Thank goodness mm -hmm. I didn't feel. Uh, it wasn't bothering me, my teeth. But I'm glad he, you know, told me I had to have that out. So the infection, he got that out. And uh, so I'm brand new again. <laughs> well, that's good. This is the brand new pot that we have today. That's right. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm brand new. <laughs> well, you know. God is new every morning, right? Yeah. yeah. Great uh, is his faithfulness. Right. So it's a new day every day, which is pretty cool. It is. And I don't know if Pam is still there or she disappeared. <laughs> you may have. Oh, she's around somewhere. There she is. Pam, do you want to share for a moment? To let us know how your week's going. Hi. Hi. Sorry. I'm in the middle of, you know, it's cleaning. Yeah. That's all I'm doing these days. I feel like that's all I'm doing. I didn't. I went in. Um, all right, hold on. Breathing something out of the washer. It's a mold. I did take off. Protocol. I went and did a um, help hub set up for a music job, which I, he's done something to his shoulder. So I'm doing more of the work. And then all of a sudden, after hauling all that music equipment in and starting to set it up, I hit a wall and just looked at him and I said, you don't need me from here. You need to go home and eat some real food. Uh, so I realized I hadn't, I had had coffee with cream this morning and that was it. And wow. So that was, by that time it was 
my little clock and I look up at the clock in the kitchen. I just pulled that down because the little clock in the kitchen failed this morning. So anyway, by that time it was like three o'clock in the afternoon. And I thought, well, no wonder you feel like you're on empty. You are on empty. Really? Yep. So anyway, I, I'd like to say I'm doing fine, but I'm looking out in our side yard and we've had since last night at 10 o'clock, we've had two inches of rain. So it's, and wow. it's not stopping. So it's trying to just make sure everything's flowing down to the creek that needs to go and not not creep up on our little house. So we're wow. on a raised foundation, but still it's kind of annoying with all my stuff I've had going with mold and stuff. I get a I'm a little anxious, I can tell. So, Scary. Anyway, but other than that, we're fine. It's, I mean, the plants and the trees are grateful for all this water. We and the lake will be full. So there you go. Anyway. Yeah. And you know, going till three o'clock in the afternoon when you're cutivore or carnivore, it's not hard to do. But then you need to eat still. Got to remember to eat. Yeah. yeah. And when yeah. when it's and I've done it about. We've just been so busy. There's been three days in a row it's been like that. And I realized it's not working for me. I have to get up and put some, you know, eggs or something in my tummy in the morning right. and move on from there. It's, just, yeah. it's not it's not enough yeah. to eat once a day. I am definitely not. Most women aren't. And I'm a most woman. I'm just Definitely once a day is not okay. Just because we, went and we tried, all tend um, to undereat. Yeah, I went and tried OMAD for three days mm -hmm. in this past week because that's okay. one meal a day. And I thought, well, I've never done that. I'll just not purposely. So I thought I'll try that. So I did for three days and I didn't sleep for those three nights. So oh, last night man. I thought, well, forget this. Really? And. I had oh, a couple ounces of cheese or whatever yesterday evening, and I slept great. So I thought, ah. what a difference. So that's what, yeah. probably a couple hundred extra calories. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm like, but I slept well. Yeah. yeah. Mind you, it's high fat yeah. too. And usually you have something high fat before bed, you usually sleep well. So, yeah. yeah. It was an accident difference. for me to do it for three days, but it certainly didn't, it didn't do my sleep. It didn't do anything. It was good, so. Just I just have to make sure I have, um, like Kelly says, purse bacon or something like that, because we tend to we just we're just really busy people, and we yep. tend to. And I'm I'm not, I refuse to eat out all the time. My pocketbook says this is not going to happen, and I don't want to. That's not where I want my fun money to go to eating out. I want it to go to. You know, taking a trip to go see the grandbaby or something. Yeah. Right. Something really, really fun. Well, I always have like a, a Chomps beef stick or something in my purse. Um, it's not a whole lot of anything, but uh, it's just to have something, you know. And, uh, yeah. So Actually, they're, they're, cl they're clean. They're okay. Yeah. And I probably should do that. There's one brand out here that's okay. I mean, the um, Pyrowar bar is great, but it's they're so expensive. Um, right. And I did buy summer, another kind of meat bar, and it also is pretty clean. I think, was it called Epic, I think? Oh, Epic's okay, yeah. Epic. Yeah. So I've they, got They use that. black pepper, and I can't do black pepper. Oh, yeah, you can't have that, yeah. yeah. Um, for me, that's okay. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. really eat them regularly, but it's right. something that you can have on hand. Keep it in your purse; doesn't go bad, you know. So, what what is it? It's a meat. E P I C bar. epic. Yeah. It's a meat bar. Epic. They have yeah. different. They're um. But the, when I the other meat, ones are way they better. They have turkey. They have turkey. Yeah. They have bison. They have beef. They have pork. Um, elk and I yeah. have bison yeah the other one um, what's it called that meat bar the good one? <laughs> oh, oh, carnivore bar carnivore bar carnivore bar 
And they have quite yeah. a few. They have some that do have some dried fruits and stuff in it. If if that's more up your alley, that's not yeah. the one I would get. But yeah, but they're very expensive. Yeah, it's actually a traditional Pimison um, recipe, is what it is. Right. Yeah. Oh. So some of them have no berries or fruit in it, and the others have some, which I I just use the regular meat one. It's very and interesting. Course, that's been used for years, pemmican, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a great thing to have in your purse, you know. So if you get hungry, you're years. out, you know it's clean. Yeah, that would be a good thing to have. Yeah. Anyway, here we are, taking a break. Oops. I don't see any kitties, Kathy. Oh, well, she's <laughs> nipping at my fingers. Ah. <laughs> Okay, you stop nipping at my fingers so that I can get this screen, okay? <laughs> she wants to play. That's what that's uh -huh. about. Yeah. She thinks it's playtime. It's not playtime. She's right here. You want to say hi? Would you like to say hello? There meow. you are. Meow. <laughs> They're meowing at you. And then <laughs> the other one's on the couch just looking. So I'm not sure where we left off, but I think it may have been at Shekinah Glory. Does anybody have that? So it's a, um, I, I have sus it's sustainable right at the end of that. And then goals are intended to bring freedom on 32. Well, I don't think we've been there. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were there. Yep. We were there. Yep. Did we get, we got to the Ark yep. of the Covenant too. I'm oh, sure. slide, slide eight. Yep. Yes, my day. That's what yep, that's what I thought. Okay. Okay. I think it's on page 37. Oh wait. Oh, here's you got 32 and I've got 37 in order for the Shekinah glory to shine. Yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so in the Shekinah glory, that's the presence of God. And that's where that's where healing takes place is in the presence of God. So just like those that were healed when Peter's shadow passed by the sick, it's mm -hmm. the presence of God. They were healed because of the Shekinah glory that passed over them. So in order for the oh. Shekinah glory to shine from our lives, we need Jesus. Of course, we need Jesus for everything. The mm -hmm. bread of heaven, the living bread within us. We can't just feast on Jesus within us or the written word occasionally. He's there all the time. So as the manna was only good for the day, it was given. We need our, our fresh food each day from God's word, the bread of life. Today, what was I reading? Oh yeah, honoring your parents. That's what it was, was on. Anyway, we need to hear God speak to us, his Rima, living word every day. So as we're reading the word of God, He's got something to say within there, within it, to us directly. That's what it means by the, by the rhema word. It's just a direct message to us. It's not just the text or the actual words that you read. It's what is God speaking to you through it. So as we obey the word of God, we have our food to do the will of the Father in heaven. We also need to move in God's authority. We're chosen, just as Aaron was chosen. We are a chosen people. First Peter 2, 9 says, You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You know, years ago, I founded and operated a ministry that was called the Ark of Blessing on Six Nations Indian Reserve. It was a place where the glory of God flowed out. It was a drop-in center that anyone who wanted could come and receive physical food, clothing, and spiritual food and clothing. Each day, we had a simple devotional and ministry available for anybody that wanted. And at that time, the Lord has said to me, freely you've received, freely give. So the Lord's desire for us is exactly that, to freely, to freely receive, and to give out freely as he leads us. We've received God's gift of his son 
and the Holy Spirit within us the moment that we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins and come into our hearts and lives to rule in his, rule it his way. Now it's time to give back to him. And how do we give back to God? We give back to God by obedience. Tonight, we've already heard. We've heard from Melanie how God is leading her. And now it's in Melanie's hands. It's kind of like this, this chess game. God moved, brought her to, to the natural path, to this, to this plan, to get rid of the inflammation. And now it's her turn to be obedient. Just as we heard from Sally, the same thing. God moved. God said, here you go. Here's a plan. And Sally, now it's in Sally's hands to work that plan. <clears throat> Just as it is with each one of us. And obedience is better than sacrifice. I'll never forget the Sunday at church. Oh, I think I, I did read this, um, but maybe not. Where there was a call for missions. Oh, no. I, didn't. I went forward, committed to going wherever the Lord wanted me to go. The minister that day said that some of us are called to go. Some of us are called to pay to send others to go into the mission field. Whether a goer or a payer doesn't matter. We're, we're together in missions wherever he leads. The first day that I spoke at a Sunday service on the reserve, I sang a song. And the song I sang is, Here I Am, Send Me to the Nations as an Ambassador for You, as an Ambassador for You, my Jesus, whatever. But I didn't sing it like that. I said, here I am, send me to six nations, because that was the name of the reserve. So you may know the song. It's a calling for you to your mission field. And we all have a mission field, wherever that is. Wherever God places you, the people around you. Uh, right now I'm at the college. That's my mission field. That's where I'm at. So it's a calling to you for your mission field. You carry the greatest gift ever and are committed, commanded to share that gift. If you love God, you'll share the ultimate gift ever to this world. And that gift is, of course, Jesus Christ, his child. It's truth, right? Jesus is the way, truth, and life. Mm -hmm. So sharing truth, if you're sharing truth with people, you're sharing Jesus. He's truth. So who you are, not what you say, is the greatest witness. I don't know if any of you have ever right. had a parent that says, do what I say, not what I do. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't work. Sometimes we've kind of implied that to people. Why do I have to do that? Because I said so, but you're not doing it. Yeah, but I said so. <laughs> so that, <laughs> that just doesn't work. You know, it's what we do that people will model. They're watching us. Each one of us is a book being read of all men. And whoever that mission field is, whoever that is that's watching you, that's what they'll do. That's why Pat was a leader in Weight Watchers for so long. People were watching her and seeing what she's doing. They're like, wow, she's doing this. I'm going to do like Pat does. <laughs> and that's what made them right. successful. Absolutely. Because if you weren't successful, then they'd be like, what kind of leader is that? She can't lead me. She doesn't know where she's going. All right. And but you and do Kathy, know where that, you're going. And yeah. Kathy, that helped me also to stick with what I was doing. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. Being a role model, being a role model. People wonder, how can she keep her weight off all those years? It's because. I was a role model and realized it and I had to do what I said I was doing. Just like you say, don't say do it this way. And I don't do it that mm -hmm. way, but anyhow, do it that way. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. It really does keep us accountable. If we're mm -hmm. in leadership, we're leading someone. That's actually how I lost my weight initially was oh. because I had this competition with the two, two group homes and I was on one of the teams, but I'm the one that arranged the competition. I thought, well, yeah. now I have to set the example because right. this was my brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so I stuck with it, even though I thought it was going to die because I didn't get <laughs> what I yeah, wanted right. you know, for food, but right. I didn't. And after getting 
through those six, that's um, the 12 weeks, 16 weeks, whatever. I don't know what time it was, how long it was, 12 weeks, I think. And um, yeah, I'd lost a lot of weight by that time. Mm -hmm. So anyway, mm -hmm. this is an older book. I wrote this in 2015. Might have been 14, 15, I think. Recently, I saw a vision of myself standing in a large box with a shovel in my hand. And the box had salt in it. Like the ark, the box had within it what this world needs. So in the vision, I was shoveling the salt out of the box or out of the ark for the wind to carry it in whatever direction the wind was blowing. See, God is saying to us that we need to send our salt, send out our salt for the wind of the Holy Spirit to carry it wherever he wills. We are the salt of the world. So salt adds life and flavor. It's a preservative and protection from decay to this lost mm. and dying world. Mm. So wow. be a salt yeah. shaker. Yeah. Let wow. the Holy Spirit carry you wherever he wants you to go. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 11 verse 1 says, follow me as I follow Christ. Our body, our physical body, is symbolic of the ark. It's a place that God provides protection and security for the glory of God. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, a holy place set apart for God's presence. It's a place that is to be a protection and carrier of God's glory within. So God is looking for pure vessels, not ones that are corrupted by sin, nor one who challenges the fear of the Lord by willfully mistreating the ark that he has made to carry the glory. You know, that really, you know, speaks to me. It's like, be careful. This is God's ark. This is God's temple. Wow. And if it's a carrier of God's glory, then we want to take care of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't tempt the Lord your God. We are triune beings with a spirit, a soul, and a body. Our mind, will, and emotions are intricately expressed through our body. We can't separate one from the other while we're alive on earth. So it's like it's it's all together. Our spirit, soul, and body. body. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. And it's just all together. Now at death, we will be separated from our bodies. But our mm -hmm. spirit and soul will be united with Jesus and they will become one with him as he is our bridegroom and we are the bride of Christ. He's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. That not only means a people who prayed the sinner's prayer, but a bride who's set apart, who's pure, undefiled, or stained by the corruption of this world. Jesus is coming back for a holy people. Are you that person? You know, God says, be ye holy for I am holy. That's what he's telling us. Be ye holy for I am holy. And yet it's something that we don't hear very often today. Even mm -hmm. in the church, be holy. Right. Mm -mm. right. It's like, wow, we don't hear that much, but that's what God mm -hmm. said. Right. Remember Moses and his excuses. Now, we would never have excuses, would we, ladies? Never. Anyway, he fin never. <laughs> he finally <laughs> surrendered to God's will by putting his own will on the altar. He became a living sacrifice, just like we are to become living sacrifices. Let's just say yes the first time around instead of giving God a pile of excuses why we can't. It's a lot easier and a lot more fulfilling. It's the only way to our freedom and for us to set the captives free. Get your butt or your butts on the altar and become a living sacrifice. So getting rid of the excuses. Remember well, what Moses said? But I'm not qualified to fulfill my calling, basically. That's right. what he was saying in Exodus 3.11. Or, I don't know enough. I don't believe I can do it. I can't really talk good. I have a problem. 
I really don't want to. Moses advises God to get someone else. Can you imagine? Yeah. But have we done the same thing? Right. Absolutely. Right? We're just mm-hmm. as guilty. We are to be living sacrifices and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Here I am, Lord. Wherever you want, whatever you want. Right? right. See, dead sacrifices, they don't get off the altar. So. Mm-hmm. We just need to die to self and be alive to Christ. Oops, let's see what's there. God's commission or goal to to Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt's slavery. So Moses truly is a great example for us. On Mount Sinai, Moses met God who descended on the mountain in fire. It was horrible holy ground as Moses met the glory of God through the bush that was burning but was not consumed Moses was told by God to take his shoes off because the place where he was standing was holy ground shoes are symbolic of man's way to overcome the challenges in the environment since nothing of man's impure ways can stand in God's presence without being consumed The shoes needed to be removed. God's way is so much higher. He has a new way, a better way to come into his presence today through Christ. Jesus is the Christ, the sacrificial, perfect lamb of God. Taking off the shoes is very significant because it meant that Moses yielded his right to live as he wanted to God. Taking off your shoes is about yielding your right to have authority in that holy place. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place, he that has clean hands and a pure heart, who do not worship idols and never tell lies? They will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God their Savior. Such people may ask you and worship in your presence. Open up ancient gates, open up ancient doors, and let the king of glory enter in. It's in Psalm 24, verse 3 to 7. Open your heart to the king of glory, your beloved he wants in. Be a carrier of God's presence, that Shekinah glory. Acting on God's authority puts us in a position to stand against the testing and the trials and the temptations of evil. There's many temptations that come our way, especially when we're trying to do what's right for our bodies, trying to eat what's right, trying to keep our minds focused on what's right and obeying the Lord of whatever he says. So that was Ephesians 6, 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you'll be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So we can't stand with our own man-made shoes. We need to stand in the Lord with a pure heart that doesn't include greed or idolatry or lying to ourselves about what we think about or what we do or who we serve or who we worship. The glory of God is about to be shed upon this land. As we release the salt for the wind of the spirit to spread across our nations and around the globe. In 1988, the Lord woke me during the time that I was expecting my baby, uh, a baby, my child, because I've had many of them. And he said audibly, this is the only time I've ever heard God audibly. And he said, I want you to call this baby Gloria for the glory of God that's about to cover this land. Mm. I answered audibly wow. and I said, if it's a girl, I will. Now I know that that was a little bit foolish because God knows <laughs> whether it's a girl or boy, but that's how I answered. And of course it was a girl, but anyway, I actually didn't like the sound of the name 
to start with. But I took my shoes off in a spiritual sense. That was my will and my way. And I surrendered to God's. And her name is Gloria. And she Mm. is a precious carrier of the glory of God. Just like you are. Each one of us were carriers. The fact that you're reading or hearing this message is a sign that to you that God is calling you to open up your heart and let the king of glory rule it. Not your will, but his be done in all things. He's called you to carry his glory and spread his salt wherever he sends you. And that is about it, I would say. So whoever's taking notes for me, probably Sally. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> Yeah, Melanie. although I have to have to say that I'm lost. Okay. Well, remember slide 13. We're moving on to slide 13 next. Okay. And where are we in the book? Well, that I don't know offhand because I'm reading in a different place. So Okay. But uh, slide 13 and that will get us there. Okay. And are we meeting next week? Yes. Is it, oh, is it your Thanksgiving? No. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Well, um, I'll still be here. And if anyone shows up, great. If okay. not, okay. Then we'll just be the week after. Okay. I'll probably okay. be here. I'm spending the day with Jesus. Okay. On Thanksgiving. So what, what better way? What a better thing. That's the best thing to do. Right. Give thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Right. Give thanks. Okay. Well, let's get a head start on that and pray and <clears throat> give thanks. Mm-hmm. Father God, I thank you that um, mm-hmm. you, Lord, are the Shekinah glory and that you dwell within each one of us. And that, Lord, you've called us that we would be obedient unto you, that we would be like that salt mm-hmm. shaker, that we would be the salt of the world. And we ask you to carry that life, that salt, to wherever you send it from each one of us. Thank you for showing each one the plans that you have for them. You've given them a plan. And now, Lord, I ask you just to help us to be obedient to the plans that you're providing. That, Lord God, we would be the healthiest that we could be. That we would be examples to others. That we would lead them out of darkness into light. That by our example, they would be drawn to the truth. That they'd be drawn to the light. That they'd be drawn to you, Lord Jesus. I ask your blessing upon this week. I thank you for the American Thanksgiving that's coming up. But Lord, we're thankful every single day of the year. And so we would give thanks for all that you've done in our lives, for all that you are doing in the United States of America through the leadership that you put there through the government. And Lord, for all that you'll be doing going forward, spreading your glory throughout all the world in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yes. All right, guys. Have a we good will week. See you whenever. If I don't see you next week, happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, ladies.